Hello everybody and welcome to an exciting mini-series in socket programming with Python 3. Um, sockets are pretty complex, or they can be complex, but they're actually not, not that confusing once you get comfortable with them. Part of what makes socket programming, or at least learning how to do socket programming, difficult is there's kind of a lack of documentation for Python in general and socket programming. See, I guess by lack of documentation I should define what that means really. And, there's plenty of documentation uh, for how to use Python for socket programming, but there's very little documentation on using Python to learn socket programming. And so with that distinction, um, you can understand like we can learn you know what what Python code does what, but what does that actually mean and all of that. So um, it's kind of hard to get started there. Also, what little documentation we have for Python and socket programming, it's written in Python 2. The problem here is we come across one of the major differences between Python 3 and Python 2, and that's the difference between byte strings and strings. Uh, so this becomes a major issue when it comes to sockets, especially when it comes to sending and receiving data, and if we want to actually like output that kind of data. So uh, with that in mind, uh, let's go ahead and start traversing sockets. Now it's going to be kind of a, a decently sized mini-series, probably um, four, five, six videos deep. but um, should be able to get through at least the basics of sockets uh, here. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. So first of all, what the heck are sockets? Okay, so sockets are open and closed basically um, to aid in the communication between two entities. And in most cases, you've got a server and a client. And the server quite literally serves information to the client that's requesting information. When you visit a website, you're opening up a socket and you're, you're requesting information from a server which serves you data. So when you visit a website, you're, you're using um, a socket and then you're accessing port right, of, of the server. And so the server has generally port 80 open, <laughs> if it's a website anyway, and port 80 is used to transfer HTTP data. And so like, that's what uh, a website does, for example. A lot of websites are also gonna have uh, 20, port 20 open for like FTP access, which isn't very secure. And then, and then you have like, um, 22, which would be open for uh, SSH, for example. So anyway, those are just some quick examples. Also, I mean, people have all kinds of ports, like the, the lower numbered ports are all very specific ports, whereas the higher numbered ports, as you'll see later on, we can actually use them. They're just general purpose, right? So you can pretty much use anything uh, for them, um, which gets people in trouble later on down the road when uh, security is in question. Um, anyway, we'll get there. So let's go ahead and get started uh, and getting down and dirty with some sockets. First of all, to use sockets, we need to import socket. Socket is a part of your standard library, so you don't have to install anything or anything like that. It is here. Um, the next thing we want to do is like, let's learn how to specify a socket. Like, how do we create a socket? So to do that, you're going to say s equals socket dot socket, and then guess what comes next? Socket dot and in all caps af underscore inet. And what this means is you're basically just, you're, you're saying what, what sort of uh, connection that you want this to be. You don't really need to know exactly what this is. The other one is like, uh, gosh, it has like a P in it, I want to say. And it's for like IPv4 traffic and stuff like that. But anyway, moving along, um, that's basically just the connection type that we want to uh, use. And then finally, we have socket.sock underscore stream. And a sock stream um, is what's going to allow us to make a TCP connection whereas you have other things like dgram instead of sock stream sock dgram um, this would be a, a UDP uh, connection but we generally are going to be using TCP uh, for networking and all that so we're going to go ahead and stick with TCP um, the next thing that we want uh, we can actually go ahead and just print out s and let's see what we what we have at this point I guess we'll wait a moment or something I don't know here we go it's coming slow so here we have um, the socket address, we have our address family, the type of socket that it is. So just the information that we pretty much just specified. Um, next, uh, with this socket, generally you want to communicate with the socket. So um, we're going to communicate with the server, and it's going to be a remote server. And the server we're going to use is uh, pythonprogramming.net. So this is obviously my website, and we're going to try to communicate with my website. Um, and then later on, we'll, we'll do some other things with it as well. So next, we specify, we know this is where we want to uh, communicate with. 
Next, what we want to do is we want to specify on what port do we want to communicate with the server. Um, in our case, we want to uh, communicate on port 80. So basically, we're going to act like a browser and access this on port 80, which is meant for HTTP. So um, from here, we can do all sorts of things. Um, we can we can actually you can make a request uh, and connect to a um, a server based on its IP address, or I mean its its <laughs> its domain name. But you can also use their IP address. That's kind of the more uh, official way of doing things. So if you do want to get a server's IP address, what you can do is server underscore IP equals socket dot get host by name, and then server. Conversely, you could open up you know command dot uh, exe, and you could just ping uh, python programming dot net. And you see there, okay, well, we've got our address, 107, 170, 176, 133. Um, but this will also do it uh, for you as well. So then, um, and just to show us that we did it, uh, server IP is what we'll print out. And now we want to actually make a request uh, with this socket. So we're going to do request equals, and we're going to make a get request. And this get request is going to look funky, but it's an HTTP request. So in all caps, we're going to say get slash space space slash space HTTP uh, slash 1.1 1 .1. um, this is gonna be a backslash n for like new line and then host colon and space plus server plus um, and then two more new lines new line new line and so that's um, this server up here. So we're, act we're making this request on Python programming and we're not using server IP here, um, but a lot of people will insist that you use server IP, but it does not matter. Next, uh, we're gonna say s equals socket.socket. .socket. Um, oh, actually, we've already defined that, so we don't have to define that again. Uh, so now we just need to do a connect. So s.connect, and then in here, we connect uh, to, uh, first we want to do Python programming .net, and then on what port do we want to connect to? Well, we want to connect on port, uh, well, we'll just use port, I suppose, port, and I suppose we could also pass through here, uh, server, server, port, and then from here, the next thing we want to do is we're going to say s.send and then we want to say the request dot encode. And here's a major difference between what you'll see in Python 3 versus Python 2 is this encoding. We naturally want to use um, strings, but actually we're using byte strings, so we have to encode the stuff that we're trying to send here because naturally it is in the improper format. In Python 2.7, you don't have this problem. It's totally a breeze. Um, but Python 3, correctly so, makes the distinction. Now we're going to say results equals s dot rcv, and we're going to use you can put you know like ten twenty four in here or whatever. They recommend anything between two and four thousand, so we're going to use four thousand on the upper hand. What is this? This is your buffer. So how much data are we going to be download at, at any given moment? Okay, so your buffer. Now when we're all done, let's just go ahead and print the result. Now this won't be buffered, but result will be buffered. We could instead print uh, the buffer well well we can't really do that we would need to make a little loop for it we'll do that later for now let's just let's run this and see where we stand so save and run that and sure enough we get all this gobbly goop output but up at the top we get our socket that we printed out the server IP that we got and then begins our request which as you can see it begins with a B that means bytecode so again the request that we take in is gonna be bytecode so then if we start trying to manipulate it with strings, we're going to get ourselves in a little bit of trouble. So when you receive data, you have to decode it. And before you send the data, you're going to have to encode it. That's the way it's, it's just going to be. So uh, keep that in mind as we move on, or if you happen to maybe look at someone else's code for an example that you're looking for. So anyway, um, the other thing that we can do um, now that we've printed our results is let, let's just comment out that and let's make some more space here. And now let me show you buffering. So uh, what we can do is see we say while um, len result is less than zero, so while there's still something to come from the result, we can print um, result, and then we can say result 
equals s dot receive and then 4096 so we can do that instead and we're not printing this out anymore and then now we can save and run this and we'll actually uh, try to move it fast enough but if you watched it yourself you should be able to see some buffering in there in fact we can change this to let's say 1024 uh, and then it, you can see how it kind of scrolled it didn't all paste it all at the same time that's buffering in action anyway hopefully you can see it better yourself before i pulled that window down but yeah so anyways, that's it with the basics of sockets. Again, this is just the first video in a series of sockets, so we'll get to be uh, doing a few more things. Um, so if you have any questions or comments on what we've covered so far, feel free to leave them below. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions, and until next time.